in this video I will be showing you how to configure always on on SQL Server 2016 so I have a lab setup where I have uh, created one DR server and one production server so I will be doing always on configuration between two standalone nodes so I have SQL Server 2016 evaluation version since it's my lab setup and I have them installed on the Windows Server 2016 so so this is my uh, production server I have named it prod SQL 01 so before I can configure always on let me um, add the Windows failover feature so I click on next next so what I need to do is that uh, when I get to features I uh, click on the failover clustering and click on add and then click next and click on install so while the installation goes on on this server I'll, I'll go to the other server so this is my DR server which is DR SQL 01 so here also I will do the same thing I'll add roles and features click on next um, I click on next I select the server click on next next and from here I select the failover clustering feature and click on add features and then click next and then do installation so I'll wait for the installation to finish on both the nodes so I can see that the feature installation is completed so I'll click on nodes and I'll also check on the DS server what's the status so it's done here also I'll click on close so now I'll go to the production server and from here I will open the failover clustering feature so here's a failover cluster manager I'll open it So I'll validate the configuration click on next so here I need to add uh, both the nodes so let me add them and I'll also add the DS over here so once I've added both the nodes I'll click on next I'll uh, click run all tests and then click next again next so as you can see that uh, all the tests have completed uh, there are some warnings but uh, this is uh, quite normal because it's a lab environment so I, 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 I just have one LAN card so that is fine but as you can see that uh, I, it's, it's a success so I can now go ahead and create the cluster so create cluster wizard I click on next okay I, I need to give a cluster name now I I have administrative right on the domain controller so you have to make sure that uh, like uh, the user ID with which you are creating the cluster you have the administrative rights or else uh, this uh, name the cluster name along with the IP address should be uh, mapped before you start doing the configuration so let me name it, name it uh, ag cluster one something like that and I, I give the IP address here so this has to be something within my network range so here what I will give is like um, I have this IP free uh, that. so there's something uh, in a real-time environment will be provided to you by your Windows administrator who should provide you with the IP address which is available within the range that this server is part of and along with it uh, map that IP address to the cluster name so I click on next here so 
so uh, I, I, I don't need to select this add all eligible storage because uh, this this is a cluster which I'm creating with two standalone nodes so there are no shared drives or SAN storage so I'll, I'll click on next and a new cluster will get created with uh, the production as well as the DR node so I have successfully completed the create cluster wizard so I'll click on finish and uh, as you can see that my uh, cluster is created with uh, two nodes so if I click on nodes it will show me both the nodes and both are up so what what I will do here is that I will configure the quorum and um, what I what I need to do is that when I, when I configure the quorum um, I will add a file here witness I, I have a file here witness um, all already assigned to me so I'll add that as part of the quorum so I I go to the configure cluster quorum wizard I click on next here I will select the advanced quorum configuration I'll click next I will keep um, the voting rights for both the nodes I'll click on next and I'll configure a configure a file share witness so as you can see that in uh, clustering in uh, Windows Server 2016 there is one addition that is configure a cloud witness this is for in case you uh, want your witness to be on the cloud or there's something when you're working with a SQL Azure then this is something which is uh, something which will be applicable uh, so there's an addition in uh, Windows Server 2016 which was not there in the previous version of Windows that is 2012 or 2 so I, I will be here creating a configuring a file here witness I click on next I select the path where I have the file here configured So I think I this is the file here witness I already have. So I'll uh, select this one and then click on next. Um, click on next. And I have successfully configured the quorum setting for the cluster. So now I have a file here witness. So uh, I'm done with the initial prerequisites and setup. So once I'm done with this, what I need to do is that I need to uh, go to the SQL server setting and uh, turn on the always on feature so I open the SQL server configuration manager I go to SQL services I click on the SQL server properties I go to always on high availability I enable always on click on OK and then I need to restart my SQL server services So once my SQL Server services are restarted, I'll go to the other node that is the DR node and I will repeat the same exercise. I go to the SQL Server Configuration Manager and I go to SQL Services. I go to the Always On High Availability tab. And enable always on click OK and then restart the SQL server services so I'm, I'm done on both the node uh, both the nodes and uh, now I, I will open SSMS on my primary node that is on the production box and from here I will open my SSMS and I will configure always on from the SQL server
So as you can see that I, I have two databases, uh, Wide World Importers and uh, Wide World Importers DW, and I will add add these two databases to the Alvison group. Uh, previously, we used to have AdventureWorks, and this is a <coughs> change in pattern from Microsoft. Now this this database is being provided. So what I need to do is I need to go to Always on uh, New Availability Group Wizard. I'll just maximize this window. I'll click on Next, create a new availability group. Okay, I need to give it some name. So what I will do is that I will just name it uh, AG1. Uh, there's a new feature which I will discuss later, database level health detection, something which I have to uh, check it uh, at this place itself. I click on next. Okay, so as you can see that um, I need a full recovery model and also I need a full backup before I can add this database to the Alvazon group. So I'll quickly do that and then refresh this settings just to uh, go ahead with the configuration. So I'm done with the backups. So I'll click on refresh. And as you can see that uh, the status is now changed to meet prerequisites. So I'll click on both this uh, database and add them to the Alvazon group. So I click next. Okay, so um, I need to add a secondary replica. I will select the automatic failover. I will select the synchronous commit and I'll add a replica. So here I need to give specify the secondary database for always on. Okay, so there's my secondary replica and uh, the endpoints that I have kept here, uh, I've kept them default. This is my endpoints. Backup preference, uh, I'll prefer secondary. I'm not going to change the settings. These you can uh, configure as per your requirement. I need to add a listener, so I'll, I'll create a listener and uh, assign a IP to it. So let me uh, name the listener. Uh, specify a port number. Again, uh, the listener name is something like I, I, I have administrative rights on domain controller. So the user with which I am logged into this server has uh, administrative rights to create objects in the domain controller. But normally in a real-time environment, you might not be having that right. So the Windows administrator will be doing this task for you. He will uh, map the listener name with the IP address and provide to you and you just need to put it here. So I'll, I'll give the IP address here. So I have this IP assigned to me. And once I'm done, I'll click Next. OK, so um, I have three options, full join only and skip initial data synchronization. I'll be doing a full uh, data synchronization because I have um, these two databases only on this server and uh, they are not there on the secondary server. So I need to specify shared network location accessible by all the replicas. So I have two replicas, so I'll select a location which is accessible um, on like by both the servers. So this is the share that I have already created. So I'll select this and click on OK and then I'll click Next. So I go to the results of availability group validation and all the validations have uh, successfully passed. So I'll click on next. And uh, this is the final uh, screen that I get where it lists me all the details of uh, the action I'm going to perform. If I want, I can script, uh, script it down to a file and uh, save it from a future reference if I want to again uh, create the same uh, kind of always on setup on another server and I can just take the script and change the parameters and run them. So as you can see that more or less the uh, process of creating uh, and configuring always on in SQL Server 2016 is much similar to the previous version but 
uh, just a minor one or two changes and in terms of the features uh, in different versions it, that's something which uh, has uh, changed pretty much and that is something which is available in the MSDN website for reference so as you can see that uh, always on configuration is completed and I can click close and if I refresh my database then I will see that the databases are now part of the always on availability group uh, they are in synchronous status so I have two replicas uh, this is my primary and this is my secondary uh, two databases are part of the always on group and I have this listener so instead of uh, this if I try to connect with the listener I should be able to connect as you can see I can even connect with the listener so if I go to my secondary I can open SSMS here and check the status here So I can see that these two databases have been created on the secondary server and they are showing in synchronized state. Let me go back to the primary again and uh, open the dashboard. And as I can see from the dashboard that uh, currently my always on is in healthy status um, with no data loss. So let me perform a manual level failover. So maximize this window. I'll click next. Click next. I connect to the secondary database. Click next and then I'll click finish again. I can script it down and uh, next time I can for perform a failover with the alter command. So I'll click on finish here and it will start the failover. So as you can see, failover is completed. And if I right now then click and refresh the databases. So I can see that one database has moved to synchronized state. Uh, second one is still not uh, synchronized. Let me go to the DR server, which is now currently my primary always on partner. And I can see both are in synchronized state. And if I go to the always on status, I can find that yes, everything is working fine. And if I open the dashboard from here, As you can see that the always on group state is healthy. Let me go to the primary server and one second refresh and see the status. So as you can see that both the database has now moved to synchronized state and data is in sync. And right now, um, DRC equal zero one is my primary and prod sql01 is my secondary